गुड मॉर्निंग गुड आफ्टरनून और गुड इवनिंग फ्रेंड्स डिपेंडिंग ऑन द टाइम वेन यू आर लिसनिंग टू दिस टॉक एस वी नो दैट द मिरास टीपीटीएस कोर्स is an unending course and as and when new material is introduced discovered invented or found out by the numerous participants of the course these will be added and lectures will be presented as per the suggestion of the inventor mario tangari new design unbreakable clamps new instruments and even improvement in the wire designs have been introduced and this talk is a summary of the philosophy technique and examples of miros tpts very special thanks to mario tangari the inventor of minimally invasive reductive osteosynthesis system that is miros and special thanks to dr sushil choudhary the innovator who has now done close to 500 cases of miros in india and is called the mini mario of india what is miros miros is a minimally invasive reductive osteosynthesis system reduction before fixation normally in orthopedics we are taught that we need to reduce a fracture before fixing it However, Miros is the only system in the world where even the process of passing wires will self-reduce the fracture as you are completing the surgery. Let me rephrase this in. all other orthopedic situations we need a 100% reduction before the first fixation attempt is made on the contrary in miros we start off with 50 60% reduction and the remaining reduction is done after the implants are reduced and the reduction is done by the implants as they migrate to transmute into the medulla by realizing the metaphyseo diaphyseal axis what is tpts tpts renamed as tangari prakash trauma system is a little advanced version of miros as miros clamps in italy cost 300 euros each approximately meaning one clamp and two wires will cost 30000 indian rupees which is rather inaffordable for indian patients to solve this problem furthermore as it is a patented technology if you use the name miros it may have legal implications in india mario tangari the inventor is a very close personal friend of mine and he sent me a box full of instruments and implants 5 years ago this is the story of the origin of tpts extremely impressed by the system i suggested some modifications to make it more sturdy reusable and uh, maybe probably used in five or six cases unlike the disposable italian clamps and thus tpts was born 
Datangari Prakash Trauma System. Recently, we had the good fortune of Mario Tangari visiting Cochin, where he gave two or three wonderful lectures on his philosophy and the principles of Miraz. And there he is with me addressing the conference on uh, modern trends in orthopedics, where he spoke wonderfully about Miraz. A plethora of recently introduced dangerous and highly invasive implants occupy the niche for treating metaphysical fractures. These sort of plates I abhor. At the moment, I see such locking plates with numerous screws in various colors and designs. I personally feel that the patient is screwed. I might be considered old-fashioned by a lot of surgeons, but I see so many complications with such newly introduced fancy costly plates that I'm scared to use such plates. And furthermore, removal of such implants is a ghastly bloody surgery. And of course, the scars, the metal, the titanium bonding, the screw on the plate welding and the small percentage of complications of infection, pouring pus. The whole thing is so disastrous that I have always been looking for alternatives for such ghastly colorful play toys which some surgeons seem to enjoy considerably in operating. Miraz DPTS is an excellent alternative to these fancy implants and gives far better outcome and a scarless surgery. In cases of young females and children, a scar is a very significant factor and this has to be avoided. John Chanley has said long ago that a patient remembers the surgeon by the scar and not by what is inside the scar. What are the components of Tangari Prakash trauma system? The components are three. Primary components, secondary components and tertiary components. The primary components are the special clamps. They can be a single washer clamp or a double washer clamp. Also nicknamed as single decker and double decker clamps. A single decker clamp can hold two parallel wires in any direction. And a double decker clamp can hold four parallel wires and each pair can be in any direction in 360 degree variation from one to the other. The other secondary component is a special long Tangari wire, which is made up of stainless steel 320, not the standard stainless steel 316. The tip is neither trocar nor bayonet, but it's a very special fluted tip with one side blunt and one side sharp, so that a slight bend to the wire can allow you to negotiate the wire into the medulla. That is a very, very important step. These are extra long 400 to 500 millimeter wires that can go to the entire length of the medulla. And up to four wires can be clamped in any direction. These wires snap from the sides. And once they snap in, it is 
possible to remove them. You will only have to slide it out. That is the beauty and the advantage of the mirror system. The tertiary components are the instruments that are used for the TPT tier system that includes a Tangari spindle, the special T handle with a, a hexagonal head which fits both into the Tangari spindle and into the clamps, the K wire bender, a spanner to tighten the Tangari clamps, and a cutter to cut the wires after bending. These four components are all that are needed for performing TPTS surgeries. You do not need power tools except under special circumstances to use a hybrid frame when you have to use a diaphysial wire. The set comes boxed with all the components, instruments and implants in an articulable box so that you have the right clamps and right wires for the right situation. It is not advisable to do the surgery with a few clamps and few wires as you might attempt to do with one or two plates and corresponding screws for a particular situation in a metaphysical fracture. Here it is advised that the whole set is kept. Use what is applicable for that particular patient at that particular time and please replace whatever you have used at that particular time. The system works as a medullary elastic fixator due to the very special clamps and wires. You can see the tapering of the Eiffel Tower with a wide base which has been able to hold a very, very high tower with flimsy struts and supports. This is the principle of TPTS. And the video has been made with little difficulty because it has been made from a different format on a computer simulation. And you can see repeatedly that the uh, telescoping of the wires will happen. In this particular situation, I'm not able to show you the video, but I will try to incorporate the video. Subsequently, the clamps are very special. They can be a single decker clamp or they can be a double decker clamp. They have got exceptionally high pull out ability and immense clamping. That means this has got a pull out strength of 600% of Elizabeth cannulated boards. 1100% of Unix or similar clamps and 1600% of just clamps. Quick examples of the process and techniques in the upper limb fractures followed by quick examples of the same in lower limb fractures will be the short gist of this lecture. Let us start with a wrist joint. That's a complicated, commuted, collapsed, intra-articular wrist fracture in a young male. 
that is the attempt at close reduction in the operation theater nevertheless such a reduction in plaster will have a high propensity to collapse and cause ulnar variants and also supination nation difficulty and restorative flexure plantar flexion difficulty the reduction is checked in ap and lateral frames and though this reduction is only 80% satisfactory we will continue because we know that the wires as they enter in will cause better reduction that is a little more precision reduction the reduction is now perfect in close maneuver the radial wire and the mid the lat, la, lateral radial wire and the mid radial uh, medial radial wire are now passed in the intermediary uh, axis we must not hit the opposite cortex but ensure that we go right through the medulla up to the radial head without penetrating the radial head on the opposite side the entire long lever of the wire is essential for the surgical principle of tpts the wires are brought out bent 90 degrees and clamped this will form a funnel in funnel principle where the radius will not collapse and ulnar variants will not occur and a single clamp and two wires is enough to hold and stabilize this fracture wonderfully without the need of any external stabilization you can see the anterior posterior lateral views and that is the post operative x ray of the patient with the clamps you can see the tiny clamps which are jewel like structures are jutting out of the skin no dressings are needed they are left open and the patient is allowed to use his arm or hand comfortably from day 1 and that is the clinical picture of how this clamping system will look you can see there is enough space between the clamp and the limb and the patient can use the wrist elbow and shoulder freely from day 1 and this is him using his hand without any bandages or dressing on the fourth or fifth day of the fracture function is a key in mirror we encourage early function and we allow as early movements as possible for the patient let's show you another example this is a very badly comminuted polis fracture in an elderly person shattered dorsally displaced and also because the vehicular accident the patient has got a compound wound on the wrist this is attempt at reduction closed alna is still unreduced radius is not volar is still a little dorsal for the attempt reduction closed that is the first radial wire is passed the wire goes right into the medulla and it goes out up to the radial head then the second radial wire which is on the medial side of the radius from this part has to be passed there we go and that goes right up again to the medulla the spindle is a wonderful instrument to help to negotiate the wire the third ulnar wire is also passed and that again goes up to the head to the life up to the olecranon process in the ulna now to stabilize ulna we need a transverse cortical wire which will be added with an extra clamp to the ulnar wire to give ulnar stability and maintaining the length we can see that the radial clamp has stabilized the radial fracture and a single clamp has stabilized the ulnar fracture and the entire situation is well under control both in anterior posterior and the lateral views with much 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 less invasion than top brick distal radial plates with a far earlier restoration of function without damage to any soft tissues without stitches without scars without any metal inside and without any effort of removal 
which can be well done in the outpatient department. There you can see the patient, one small clamp for the ulna, one small clamp for the radius and just three wires. All his problems totally solved. And that is the radiological picture. Next ray taken on the post-operative period. And the patient went on to it well. Another example, a very shattered and comminuted distal radius fracture. You can see the ulnar variance, the radial collapse. And here we use a joystick to lift the radius up. And once the radius is reduced, and the ulnar variance is smashed and the radio ulnar level is same. We start with the radial styloid wire, which goes right through up to the opposite end of the head of the radius. And then we have the medial radial wire, which goes here. And that also goes right up to the radial head. The wire is bent at 25 to 30 degrees. And we get an orientation on the bend of the wire with the spindle chuck. So that by rotating the spindle, the bend can be moved and we can ensure that the wire that is going towards the cortex can be reintroduced towards the medulla. The third wire is now introduced, again ensuring that it enters the medulla and travels straight into the medulla. This third wire is an anti-collapse wire of the radius and has to have a cortical purchase. With this system, we need two clamps, one for a medullary and cortical purchase, another for a bimedullary purchase. And the same procedure can also be done with a single double washer clamp which will be shown to you at a later stage. That is a picture of the patient radiologically on the table. The whole procedure takes only about 15 to 20 minutes and the radiological and clinical results are extremely gratifying and satisfying. And we can see the full movements of the elbow, sorry, a full movement of the radius on the table immediately after completion of the surgery. The time taken is much, much, much lesser than what we need per plate. Bleeding is practically zero. And a soft tissue trauma and insult is unknown. Invasion is extremely minimal. The clamps are lightweight, aesthetic, and beautiful. And because it is a long medullary and a short external fixation, it behaves in a funnel in a funnel principle where you can imagine you put a funnel into a funnel and the second funnel will not collapse inside because there is only that much space in the middle diaphragmal area. That is a patient on the fifth day of the surgery. The lordship flexion restricted on the side of the operation is because of the presence of clamps and wires and once these will be removed, the patient will get a full dorsiflexion flexion of his wrist. That is another patient with the volar bottom, the small volar fragment. And here we have reduced it, fixed it, and used a volar olive wire, which has been used as a buttress. Instead of a standard buttress plate, and the same has been clamped dorsally to the uh, TPTS clamp to ensure that it is in position. And you can see that the olive wire is bent and left out of the skin for later removal from the volar aspect. While you pass the olive wire, it is better to make a small neck, expose the tendons, and ensure that you are not going through the nerve. That is very important. That's a patient once more, a bad radial collapse. And here it is using the standard frame. This person also had a metacarpal shaft fracture. And we could extend the frame and attach the metacarpal shaft to the frame 
and could have a single lightweight assembly for the whole procedure. Another fracture, this is a distal radial fracture and another fracture, a rather complex non-classifiable one. Fortunately, the radiocarpal joint is intact. And here you can see that the ulna has been managed by a rush nail and the radius has been managed by a proper TPTS application, which is minimally invasive and far superior to the plates which are used in such conditions. Though the TPTS clamp has been removed early, there are rush nail for ulna, they are waited for removal, which has been removed subsequently, and the patient went on to heal uneventfully with excellent results. This is another lady with her traditional colleagues, their VO, and that it was the radial height restored, radial variants corrected, and the patient is extremely comfortable. This is the post operative x ray. One more patient with a very bad shattered wrist, comminuted in a bad shape, the whole thing was straightened, put into place, and that is her post removal x ray with full function. Slight restriction of dorsiflexion, which should receive, which should revive his uh, dorsiflexion, which should revive in another three months. This is only a two and a half month uh, result after removal of the procedure. One more complex radial shattered fracture. There we go. The length is restored. A single cortical or bicortical wire helps to keep the restoration in position, two clamps keep it in place, dorsiflexion, x-rays, and that is function on 7th or 10th day. One more community wrist fracture, which would have been normally punished by a distal radial plate, and you can see close reduction gets it into a semblance, and then a combination of two clamps in a montage which maintains the reduction, produces outstanding results, which is totally functionally compatible. Still one more with a distal radial fracture, reduced, wired, clamped. And that is one more fracture with a dorsal combination and a flake on the dorsal side and a very simple surgery. Hardly takes 20 minutes to get the whole thing in place. You can see the TM and radiological pictures of the same on the right side. And that is a patient with the clamp on within 10 days of the surgery, far superior to distal radial plates. Another case, we can see very badly community distal radial fracture and 20 minute job. The volar button is corrected, one olive from the volar side, and everything falls into place. The olive is left out so that it can be pulled out from the volar side. As mentioned previously, we have to be a little careful of the olive and ensure that we pull it out from the side we have inserted. And as far as possible, a small nick is made to ensure that we are safe from the median nerve and we are only into the small fragment, which is displaced volar words. That is the final x-ray of the patient. Next, we come to elbow fractures. Look at this shattered elbow. What is the textbook teaching for this? You do an olecranon osteotomy to look at the fracture pattern. And then you do a bicolumnar plating, a medial plate, and a lateral plate. This is what is the classic textbook teaching. To me, this is a horrendous surgery. Extensive opening, two to three hours. Determined efforts to get the articular surface in place. 
and pure cosmetic surgery for radiological appearance. I will boldly say that Campbell and Neo are wrong in this approach for shattered elbows. And these plates are dangerous, useless, costly and patient unfriendly implants causing tortuous results to the patients. You can see the end result after such a plating and after the great difficulty the plate has been removed and see the status of the elbow. This is another one which the surgeon has tried to fix with movements of only 20 degrees post-operative at the end of three months. You can see the stiff multiple incisions and the stiff car, stiff elbow and the ugly scars. That is a punishment, a cruel punishment to the patient. Totally stiff elbow, scar, metal, dissatisfied patient, despite an excellent radiology. So, these cases operated in the textbook fashion by Nolakram osteotomy may give a semblance of radiological correction and some initial post-operative radiological satisfaction to the patient and surgeon. But in the end, end up with a totally stiff scarred elbow which is functionless and the patient blaming himself and the surgeon cursing the patient. This patient had a stiff elbow at 90 degrees with zero degree movement and this is the elbow x-ray at the removal of implants. Neither radiological satisfaction nor clinical satisfaction. Another patient who had a massive repeated sessions of ozone therapy, physiotherapy and manipulation and his movements were only between 19 to 120. And the patient cursed himself and the surgeon for getting operated. Now look at the option and an alternative. You have a similar fracture as shown above. Once again, somebody has done this great, beautiful EO philosophy. Not even followed it fully. He has that put one side plate and one side K-wire to his radiological satisfaction. The plate broke, the wire migrated. How pathetic are the results of teaching? Not one or two. It goes operated by olecranon osteotomy and dual plates have got close to 40% failures as per literature. And as I am a tertiary referral surgeon, I get only these failures for treatment. Radiological cosmetic surgery, ghastly metal, bad scars, stiff elbow, dissatisfied surgeon, unhappy patient. That is the unhappy triad. Now we can look at another patient. As the patient was in too much of pain, he could not have an AP X-ray or there are two lateral X-rays, but you can see the shattered condyle. And there he has a bruise, impending compartment syndrome, operated within six hours of admission. There is straightened and now under the CM you can appreciate the intercondylar element and the fracture and you can see the anterior displacement of the supracondylar fracture. This is an attempt at reduction as best as we can and without attempting to improve the reduction to 100% as is done with plates, we start with the medullary nails medullary wires of the Tangari Prakash trauma system because these wires are self-reducing and will help reduce the fracture as the wires move up the uh, medullary canal going to the proximal end of the neck of the humerus. As, as the wire is pushed upwards manually with a spindle. Once it is not going in the direction that we desire, 
we have to rotate the spindle and automatically the bent wire will get into the middle redirection and then we can push it up we can see that as the wire migrates and traverses proximally towards the neck of the humerus the fracture will reduce that is what is mirrors this is minimally invasive reductive osteosynthesis system now we pause a second medial wire again from the medial epicondyle it goes in and then it enters the medulla we can rotate it to ensure that it enters the medulla and once it enters the medulla we examine it both in ap and lateral views and as the second wire passes reduction becomes even more uh, anatomical you can see the wire enters in rotates and moves up so instead of a video i have shown you in stills to ensure that the wires travel up these cases belong to dr sushil choudhury these are not my cases this dr sushil choudhury has done more than 500 cases of uh, tpts in india once the two wires divergent wires reach up to the neck of the humerus the whole fracture system is reduced both in anterior posterior and lateral directions as can be seen radiologically and a flexion extended uh, cm view of the elbow is taken to ensure the reduction is adequate perfect and satisfactory and then is a delta wire is a transverse wire is a trans epicondylar wire and this is the one that helps eventually in the pumping system to ensure that as the elbow moves the fracture unites the wires are bent and then they are clamped to the tangari prakash trauma system clamps tpds clamps and you can see the picture of the clamp wire that is in radiograph of the situation and that is the patient on the table with movements of flexion and extension and like internally fixed uh, elbows which need rest for a few days possibly in a slab and then need a drain and then very slow mobilization after about two weeks here the mobilization can be started on the second day there is no bleeding there is no invasion there is no heavy metal inside the body and there is absolutely no scar and so we can ensure that what movements we get on the table on the second day of surgery the patient gets outside in the outpatient department this patient had a radial nerve neuroplexia with a risk drop for which he had been into a corner cocup splint one more example you can see a very badly shattered elbow fracture compound grade 1 penetrating injury from inside out and there it is full straight reduced a transverse wire first and then once the transverse wire used to the joystick the first lateral wire is passed goes intramedullary bends at right angle then the medial wire through the comminuted segments is just slowly negotiated up because the bend in the wire by rotating the spindle you can push it up the medulla and push it straight up Uh, we have to take regular ap and lateral views to ensure that it is going up straight and you can see that the final results both in cm and radiologically are absolutely precise beautiful and perfect and far better looking elegant and uh, satisfactory both to the eye and to the patient and functionally than ghastly polychrono osteotomy and dual plating and that is a patient functioning 7 days after the surgery the clamps have been covered for aesthetic reasons because the patient did not want the clamp to show out in her home another example very badly shattered elbow there they reduced the delta frame x rays and uh, see on pictures that is the one after removal and that is the function exactly after 60 to 70 days she eventually went on <coughs> to recover and regain full function eventually <coughs> another compound grade 1 
shattered elbow fall from a tree we can see how the same principle has been applied a delta frame a transverse wire a medial wire a lateral wire and as the wires transverse upstairs the fracture gets reduced that is the primary fracture healing and that is the pre and post stop of the patient and she has got 90 degrees of movement with the clamps itself and once the clamps are removed her movements are full another shattered elbow and you can see the process in the operation theater and that is him after removal of implants and absolutely full movements clinically and excellent results radiology. One more patient with bruising, near compound, almost compartment syndrome entering, there is the radiology and there he is post-op. One other example, there he is badly shattered, there on the table, one more patient. This patient is more interesting, had a fracture of the elbow and the wrist due to a fall out to the child. And you can see how badly this intercondylar fracture was. This would have normally been punished by distal radial plate, olecranon osteotomy, medial elbow plate, lateral elbow locking plate, heavy metal, stiffness, possible complications, discharge, and a huge bill of 2 lakh rupees. And a surgical time of 3 to 4 hours. Here, in half an hour, the wrist was fixed and the elbow was also TPTS and that is the patient immediately on the table after 20 minutes of surgery or half an hour of surgery. TPTS has a wonderful use in neck of numerous fractures. Philos to me is the most dangerous implant ever invented should never have been invented and should be banned and thrown out of the orthopedic spectrum. Proximal humerus is a very vascular bone, rarely goes into non-union unless the surgeon enters the room and philos is a bad commercial pathetic implant which any right-minded orthopedic surgeon must stay away from. These are dangerous, needless, useless implants. And you can see the results most often. They are rewarded with complications and punishment to the patient. A series of complications of philos will really tell you that this invasive open addition of plates does not work biomechanically and physiologically impractical, illogical and bad for the patient producing scars, stiffness, internal metal and misery to the patient. On the contrary, Philos, Miros is a wonderful alternative. TPTS is an elegant situation where with just four wires and one clamp, we are able to get the fracture well in line, beautifully reduced and ensure that the patient is able to function normally and properly from day two or day three. There is a fracture neck of humerus, CT scan, had a, compound, had a grazing injury on the hand, the surgical procedure is shown, the head is reduced, by traction, the first proximal wire, it goes in, it joysticks and stabilizes the head. Now we have a cortical wire from a diaphysis going up into the medulla. Now once it reaches the place, we add the second cortical wire and reaches again the near cortex, almost near the uh, articular surface of the head. Then we have to start with the proximal wires. These are put away from the acromion so that they do not, they do not impinge on the uh, head and neck while the wire is passed. And there it goes, the first wire. 
This is the most important instrument, Dangari spindle. And the spindle is very useful because the slots, we can see the three hexagonal slots will be at 180 degrees to the bend in the wire. And by rotating the spindle, we can ensure that the bend of the wire matches the bend of the spindle and we can change the direction of the wire when it hits the cortex we can ensure that it no longer hits the cortex and goes into the medulla in any case we have to ensure that the wire travels from one end of the bone to the opposite cortex so if you are doing from the elbow it has reached the humeral head if you are doing from the humeral head it has to reach the elbow. The joystick wire can be removed after the second wire in the head of the humerus has been passed. The second wire is now being passed, it's rotated, it reaches the elbow. The four wires are now clamped and then a TPTS clamp is attached. They are bent at a sufficient distance away from the body for uh, clamp clearance and also for allowing the shoulder movements and the joystick wire is removed. Those are the AP and lateral in Sion pictures. Patient was osteoporotic, there was a bone void when the fracture was reduced. So that was filled with hydroxyapatite bone cement. That is the surgical steps. We have passed the first wire, second wire, third and fourth wires. The wires are being bent and then they are clamped in a single clamp. And there you can see how they are clamped. Now, this interesting case, this patient had a neck of femur and an elbow. Very fortunately, the patient did not go to a corporate hospital, else she would have ended up with a pelos, olecranon osteotomy, medial elbow plate, lateral elbow locking plate, and lacks of will. Here, we have done a delta synthesis for the elbow along with a synthesis for the neck of humerus with a um, liquid bone graft for the proximal humerus to ensure that the bone void is filled and the fracture doesn't collapse. You can see that a long extra external frame has to be applied to ensure the stability of the fixation assembly and as the patient is allowed to mobilize past both elbow and the shoulder no external dressings are used and that is the function of the patient after the removal implants at as little as eight weeks that's elbow function and shoulder function no scar no metal and no second surgery for removal. A neck of humerus, as usual, there it is reduced from varus, it is made into valgus. And then the elegant mirrors, two wires distally and two wires for metaphysis, single clamp. One more example, and that is a patient post uh, removal with function. Another neck of humerus. Reduced, fixed with TPTS, one more, reduced, fixed with TPTS, bone white, filled with bone graft, which you can see in the space. That's one more. And another elegant alternative to the philos, which I would repeat is a dangerous and tricky. There you can see the patient, very hygienic, very useful to use, and she can start mobilizing much faster, no scar, no stitches, and no trouble. This is an acromial clavicular joint, lateral end of a clavicle fracture with a big bump. Patient was worried about cosmosis, did not want a hook plate. First wire, the second wire, and a small clamp. Everything is reduced, and it is in beautiful place. No scars, no stitches, and the patient had a and wonderful function. This is a child of about 13 years of age, 
who did not want a non-operative management or a cast because he had consulted five surgeons and everybody had advised him a tense nail. He was treated with a TPD system, a supracondylar fracture again, treated with TPTS, just two wires, one more bad elbow, treated with a delta frame in a pediatric patient, went on to unite beautifully in three weeks, four weeks, full function, no damage to epiphysis, and full callus and full movements. You can see this is a old lateral condyle humerus with a gross virus deformity, reduced carrying angle, posted for French osteotomy, and we can avoid plates by using TPTS system, by doing the osteotomy, displacement, and using just two clamps and wires in external stabilization mode. And this is the example of the patient, deformity corrected and full, full elbow movements. That is the French osteotomy for valgus elbow. That's a varus elbow, straightened just two wires, one clamp, and the whole thing is united beautifully. This is a pre-operative status, intraoperative. The wedge is done and the wedge is closed with the wires and clamps. There is a patient post-operative. In bilateral fractures, it is very, very useful because we cannot afford to put two plasters. And these minor clamps and wire allow full function from day one. You can see the bilateral fracture being treated with uh, TPTS. And the patient is functional from day three, he has gone to school, he's able to eat, he's able to write and read, and he is happy with his daily activities of living. There are some complex situations like this ankle fracture with a very bad skin condition where plating would have been disastrous. If we have gone by mini-invasive or micro-invasive methodology, and you can see the results, which are outstanding. That is the limb of the patient, the compartment syndrome has already started to dig the, the coming down because of uh, the clamps. Another ankle compound, again, unsuitable for internal fixation, and surely not indicated for the AO non-union machine or the AO external fixator has been reduced closed. And you can see that at a week, there's no infection. And that was a pre-operative picture. And that is a X-ray of the patient with a shattered comminuted fracture. And that is a post-operative, intraoperative where a transfers external stabilization is done. So, coming to the end of the talk, what are the take-home messages? Caution, read instructions before operating. So, this is a book, Tangari Prakash Trauma System by Mario Tangari, myself and Dr. Sri Chaudhary. There is an IOS three months flexible Miros TPTS course where everything is taught step by step. Have the right implants, use the original Miraz PPTS clamps. Very, very, very important point. Have the right instruments to insert these clamps in the right position into the bone, exactly as described in this talk. Use original SS320 elastic wires, not the ordinary stainless steel 316 Kishner wires of 1.8 mm. They will not work, the whole thing will become loose and you will blame the system. You must use a Tangari spindle, which is very special, and that can be rotated to the right angle to ensure that the wire migrate and transport up right into the middle arm. Do not use power tools for progressing the wire into the middle arm. Do not substitute just or unix clamps. This is a request with folded hands. Do not, do not use these clamps which do not have adequate stability or pull out strength. And if you put intramedullary wires with these clamps, you will have loosening, you will have contract infection, 
and you will blame the Miraj philosophy. So please, please, please do not use these plants. They are unsuitable and they are not advised to be used. Thank you very much for listening to the talk. There is my Tegu, which is from my, sorry, this is my Tegu. Hey, that's my Tegu, which is a South American uh, lizard who has been with me for so many years. His name is Subramani. And he has been listening to me while I've been doing the talk, while my cat has been playing on my laps. If you want to do the course, want the book or clamp, WhatsApp message, the above number, or you can message me on 97910-20615. Repeat, 97910-20615. I'll be happy to send you the course details and the details on the clamps. Thank you very much for listening to this talk and hope to see you again soon with more examples of Miros CPTS in different diverse conditions. Thank you for attending this lecture. Thank you.